Okay, so let's uh, look at some of the, the, the points from the uh, advisory work perspective. So in some uh, uh, advisory services, um, there's this tendency to do too many things on behalf of the entrepreneurs or potential talent. Uh, this can be doing the financial calculations or financial estimates and so forth. And one of the really key perspectives uh, for advisory work is to, to really stay at the advisory level. So the, the saying of give man a fish and you feed him for a day, teach a man to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. So this is a very key notion to how to address and, and approach the advisory. For me, it has personally always meant that, that don't pick up the pen to do something. Try to, try to communicate it in such a way that you get others to pick the pen or give them a tool, teach them how to use it, but do not start entering and showing how to use it. You can still you know, provide generic information, but, but oftentimes I've seen many advisors, for example, doing financial uh, calculations on behalf of uh, startups and then when they go to, to meet an investor or they go to meet uh, with, uh, with uh, capital loan or something and the, the person on the other side is asking about the numbers and sometimes even hearing the answers like I'm not sure about that number because it was the advisor who did the calculation so that's not giving good credibility and it, it doesn't give trust to the numbers and if the person don't know their own numbers. <clears throat> um, identifying wants and needs from what is actually needed and, uh, and for example the saying that you can't have your cake and eat it too, having it both ways. In startup world that means that, that of, oftentimes uh, entrepreneurs would like to get security or at least new entrepreneurs uh, want to get security, so they would like to get, how do I get the financials in place? How do I get you know, investors? How do I get money so that I can, I can do this and take a risk? But at the same time, they are still too far away from actually that making sense. And uh, a worst thing that can be done is to encourage someone to take a business loan and put you know, guarantees behind that. Um, if it's too far away from potential validation and revenue, uh, basically setting it to fail and, and in, the, in the poor financial situation for a person who already didn't have finances to begin with uh, to back that up. Uh, that can create years of delays for them to get back uh, into doing anything. Um, another part is that there is Obviously, everyone is looking for money, need for money, but that's not the real need. Usually, the question to be asked is, okay, if you have this money, what do you do with that money? Where do you need that money? And oftentimes, if it's heavy on their personal need, then that's not the right need they have. Because that's given, like everyone has need for money, but if they don't understand why they need money, how they would use that money to develop the company, then that's the quick question. But if they can describe, well, I would need to buy a software, I would need to buy, uh, you know, a lawyer, I need to pay a lawyer, you know, 1,000 for this and I need to buy for that, then you can start getting real information of what they actually are thinking and what they are needing. And also, for example, saying that, well, because of our support function, we actually have lawyers that you can talk for free and the government is paying them you know, to, to be here for one day or they are part of a big legal company and they are doing that as a, as a public service, um, pro bono service or to be connected with innovators. So you don't need money to that. Okay, what else do you need money for? And this is also the source of getting information about developing uh, support functions and or finding private side partners to cater some of these support services where money is not needed to help the companies and entrepreneurs get further along 
uh, so that uh, so that uh, it's not necessary for them to first think of spending their own money, taking loan money, or even talking to investors. Because investors also don't to like putting money just to take risk of the entrepreneurs lower. They want the money to be going into how the company is being developed. So how the growth of the tech companies uh, implementing the plans or strategies of the company, uh, doing more effective validation or putting them more in the scaling if they are at that, at that phase. Um, the advisory for uh, specific to formation phase, it's really to help most focus should be on supporting the team formation and team building as well as the basic mindset volume thinking logic and this validation uh, logic. So uh, a good tool for that is really to focus on <clears throat> things that go into shareholder, founder shareholder agreement uh, document and we have a separate workshop from this, but it's also a big part of the module two, uh, of the formation phase. So there we have a lot of information in context of what all of these things mean. Um, but the, the shareholder agreement template is also free part of our, our uh, Creative Commons materials. And it gives at least a structure to be used as a tool with founding team members to connect the various things that they need to figure out. And on the other hand, it also gives the tool for advisors to focus on things that they need to figure out on or, or help the entrepreneur uh, to figure out. And then there are the associated KPIs that were covered earlier in the formation, how to measure the effectiveness of this type of advisory services or training services um, in this phase. Uh, general points on advisory work at the validation phase. So, uh, key part of the startup ecosystem activities for good or for worse is pitching and pitch training. And, uh, and it is a, a, a very useful and healthy exercise for many purposes beyond the uh, investing itself. Of course, that's where it has started from, but it is to be forced to conceptualize and to learn to communicate about the business faster and in condensed way, in such condensed way where audience can still understand it very quickly. And this is a simply measure of effectiveness for potential growth. The, the, the faster and more clearly you can communicate the business, the faster um, you can grow your business. So it is a healthy exercise, but uh, Oftentimes, there are not necessarily enough of training opportunities to go train uh, the pitching. Uh, there are maybe competitions, there are uh, presentation format, uh, but, but to really offer opportunities to go and do it in a training session in a way that is available uh, all the time. And you can just go there and train and you get valuable feedback. Uh, that's a that's a type of uh, good advisory services where it's a bit softer feedback, but still very effective and relevant. And really to help guide the content content of what type of information uh, should go there, depending on the audience that is being pitched. Whether it's pitched to find co-founders, whether it's pitched to uh, find additional team members, whether that's to pitch find investors, whether that's to pitch, find uh, company partnerships, and so forth. And then uh, advisory work at scaling. Um, here, it's really to kind of help guide the company away from the, you know, the, the startup ecosystem world thinking and more of the business vertical thinking and to start uh, uh, interacting much more with industry relevant uh, uh, events and uh, internationalization opportunities uh, to be familiar with different services and products that are available within the ecosystem and, or through international partners and so forth uh, and doing introductions and then measuring the effectiveness of those uh, uh, introductions 
and to help find uh, services or platforms to, to find additional team members and more long-term advisors and, and even board members for strategic positions to help guide uh, the company uh, in later phases. So this really comes down to then, again, each, in each of these phases, the advisory role is really helped uh, the person and the team to get to the right mindset to focus on the things that are essent in that development phase. And on the next phase, to help them get rid of the past phase thinking and activities and uh, get their minds adjusted into the, the new uh, phase uh, activities. And again, on the, the, the scaling phase to, to forget the past and build a new mindset, a scaling mindset, a growth mindset. 